This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Vs and generous donations from viewers like you. So uh, seeing a presence of a quorum, I'm calling to order this meeting of the Regional School Committee at 6.31 p.m. And we'll start with a uh, roll call attendance. Um, Mr. Demling. Demling present. Mr. Harrington. Harrington present. Ms. Kenny. Kenny present. Ms. Lord. Lord present. Ms. Seeger. Seeger present. Ms. Spitzer? Spitzer present. Ms. Stancer? Stancer present. McDonald present. And, uh, uh, Sullivan absent um, or not present. Um, so uh, before we get started, we are um, being live streamed on the Amherst Media website and in Amherst on channel 15. Thank you um, to Amherst Media for helping us out with that as always. Um, our first item is public comment, um, and we have two voice messages that I'll play right now, and then um, uh, a little bit of uh, written content. For those that are watching from home, um, the written, the email public comment is posted on, on the Regional School Committee agendas webpage um, for this evening's meeting. So if it's easier for you to follow along um, at home, that's, uh, you can go grab it there. Hi, my name is Jennifer Page. I live in Amherst, and I'm the parent of an art sixth grader. A lot has been said about the metrics that the district and the APEA jointly agreed to regarding in-person schooling. It seems like no one was vocal about the metric being too low when the agreement was made. It's only now that the threshold has been met that it feels like it's too low. But I hope you will consider that maybe the fact that the threshold was met so soon after beginning in-person schooling does not mean that the threshold is too low. And maybe it means that things are getting pretty bad faster than anyone thought. Maybe the metric is not the problem, but the reality of the pandemic is the problem. Changing the metric will not fix the problem. In addition, I would like to strongly urge the school committee to agree to open bargaining with APEA when it comes to renegotiating the agreement. There are many reasons that open bargaining is a good idea when it comes to labor relations, but speaking as an ARPS parent, one of the best ways to get families and community members on board with whatever agreements or decisions you jointly make is to allow them access to understanding how you got there. If you want to prevent what happened this time from happening again, that is, you find an agreement, then get pressure from the public to renegotiate, then please agree to open bargaining so that the public can be informed. Thank you. Hello, my name is Bennett Hazel. I live in Amherst. Uh, one of my kids is a third grader at Fort River, the other is a seventh grader at the middle school. I've heard that the union rejected the school committee's call to potentially rethink the threshold for putting kids in the school buildings and pulling them out. And if that's true, I'm deeply disappointed. Uh, I agree with Dr. Peter Everett's idea shared in his letter to the editor in Monday's Gazette that in addition to our current green light, red light options, we need to have a yellow light that affords Amherst school leaders and health leaders some discretion and discernment in determining whether or not kids should be in school buildings. Right now, our agreement allows no flexibility, and it pegs the threshold at a rate that's simply too restrictive, the most restrictive in Massachusetts, as I understand it, and not one with recommended guidelines from the state. If I thought for a second that this would expose my kids' amazing teachers to undue risks, I wouldn't support it. But our nation is months into this unwanted experiment with kids, including my nieces and nephews in other states, having been in school since early August. I'm surprised but encouraged by the findings published in the New York Times, The Atlantic, NPR, and other trustworthy media outlets that elementary schools simply aren't super spreaders. I don't blame either the union or the school committee for putting us in this spot. These were incredibly tough decisions to have made at the time when the facts on the ground were changing daily. But now that we've seen the practical impact compared with the experiences of other schools around the country, I'm struggling to find a good reason that the union full of teachers who are working at least twice as hard as they would in any normal year is not at least open to discussing a new option that won't result in our young children being pulled into and out of school time after time. Our window for the near term may already be practically closed with cases on the rise as I speak today. Regardless, we should use this time 
planning for more flexibility and informed discretion in the winter months if our community can keep numbers at a manageable level. And we should avoid a cycle of small, constant skirmishes in favor of focusing on the bigger picture. Thanks for hearing me out. Thank you. Are folks able to see my, uh, my screen? Thank you. Um, I will say that the, um, this first comment um, was received before last week's meeting. It was received on Thursday and I neglected to include it in Thursday's public comment.
So as mentioned, that um, that all of the written public comment is available on the ARPS.org website on the Regional School Committee Agendas page. We are now going to um, move on to our next item. Um, and I will make a motion to that we enter into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the APEA if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public, bod public body and the chair so declares, and I do declare, with no intention of returning to open session. Is there a second? Lord second. Moved by McDonald, seconded by Lord. We'll take a roll call vote. Mr. Demling. Demling, aye. Mr. Harrington. Harrington, aye. Ms. Kenny. Kenny, aye. Ms. Lord. Lord, aye. Ms. Seeger. Seeger, aye. Ms. Spitzer. Spitzer, aye. Ms. Stancer. Stancer, aye. Mr. Sullivan. Sullivan, nay. McDonald, aye. The motion passes eight to one. So we will now adjourn to executive session.